I honestly could have been giving birth in a closet. You can't do this. It felt like holy ground. She's in labor. Like my mum actually thought I was gonna give birth in the car. with people the story literally goes on for like two hours and I am not gonna speak for two hours <laughs> my camera will not take it and you probably wouldn't either I don't want to simplify or dilute the the wonder and the majesty that was honestly giving birth I'm not exaggerating when I say it was the most beautiful God filled experience of my life. So Koa was due 19th or the 20th of April. So he was like a good nine days overdue. But honestly, leading up to his birth, even after his due date, I was feeling so comfortable in my body. I was still sleeping really well. I was still moving really well. And I think a key part of that was honestly, I took really good care of my health throughout my pregnancy. I ate really clean food. I was going for walks and doing yoga every single day. I wasn't in a rush to get him out. I know a lot of people feel so uncomfortable or I don't know, maybe they're really excited to meet their baby that they do lots of things to try and make their labor start like eating spicy food or doing vigorous exercise or whatever it is. I just knew baby would come when baby was ready. And in the meantime, I'll just keep enjoying my one-on-one -on -one time with my husband and i wanted to keep my body in the most peaceful calm state going into labor so i could be as strong as i possibly could be because i know that it's a bit of a marathon <laughs> it honestly felt like an ordinary day i had no signs that baby was coming i didn't have any braxton hicks i didn't have my bloody show i didn't have any twinges nothing and so i went off to my sort of prenatal yoga class at night time which honestly is just sort of like light stretching it was during the class i sort of like rolled and turned over on my mat and i was like oh did i just pee my pants <laughs> i don't know was that was that my water's breaking i'm sure this goes without saying considering this is like a birth story video but like i'm just gonna i'm gonna give you everything so if you're uncomfortable with i don't know bodily fluids and stuff like that here's your warning to click away <laughs> i i finished the class and i come home and I look and I see like it is wet, but it wasn't heaps. You know the movie, like there's this big gush and you're like, oh, it's the baby's coming. Then I look in the toilet bowl and there's a little bit of blood. And I'm aware that that is a sign of like your mucus plug coming out. Um, so I didn't freak out, but I just call my midwife straight away and say, look, this is the situation. I don't know if I've leaked a little bit of my amniotic fluid, um, but you know, there's blood in the toilet bowl. She kept talking to me for about 10 minutes saying, just rest, just relax, which I already knew. Don't get your adrenaline high because as soon as your adrenaline kicks in, uh, it really slows the progress of labor. No, you're not feeling any contractions, are you? And I said, no, no, I'm feeling totally, Oh, oh, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> I feel, I feel a cramp. That was the beginning of my contractions. So I started getting contractions. They were really irregular. You wouldn't technically say I was, I was in um, labor at all. It was just the early signs of labor where I was just getting a contraction here and there every five minutes, 10 minutes. I, and it was totally manageable. I could breathe through them. I could talk through them. It just felt like a dull period pain cramp. So my midwife reiterated to me, okay, get a good meal, go to bed. And if your contractions continue through the night, for sure, call me, but just try and sleep. I was able to get a good night's sleep, although I did keep waking up. I sort of used that time every time I woke up because there was like a cramp. I used that time to actually really focus, praying over the birth, praying over the midwives, the room, my body. And I used that time throughout the night just to get into the right headspace. And I started really talking to Koa, my baby, just saying like, we're so excited to meet you. Um, please don't hurt me. So when I woke up in the morning, I felt pretty rested considering I had a bit of a broken sleep. But what I did notice was the contractions had started becoming more regular, more consistent and more intense. So I called the midwife just letting her know saying, hey, this is the situation, this is where we're at. 
and she got my husband to time my contractions because I know that this early stage of labor can just take a long time. I got my yoga mat out. I did some stretches on the deck behind me as the sun was coming through. I did lots of hip opening stretches. So my husband starts a bath and then I get in and that felt so nice. It just felt like a heat pack all around me because as the time progressed, I felt less and less inclined to actually move around. I felt like I was slowly being drawn into a dark cave. I started just to become really insular and quiet with, with my sounds, with my movements. For majority of my labor, I just had my eyes closed. I felt like I was just in this dark cave. So I got out of the bath and into the bed and I just felt like anyone touching me just was achy and painful. I, some people really like massages or touches during labor. I was like, oh my gosh, don't touch me. I became such like a grizzly bear in his cave where I was like, don't touch me. I just need to be by myself, just in silence, just breathing through the pain until my contractions became regular enough that the midwife said, okay, you can come to the hospital. However, to be honest, at this point, I feel like we left it almost a little bit too late because it took genuinely like 20 minutes for me to get to the car because every few steps I had to stop and I had to like breathe through the contractions. And the hospital is a lovely 45 minute drive away. Dad was driving, my mum was in the front, and this was a time where my husband no longer needed to be timing my contractions. He truly became my my coach in that moment. I felt like I was like, I don't know, a tennis player on court and he was my coach guiding me, telling me what to do. And he was holding my hand the entire time and helping me through the contractions as they became more intense through breathing exercises. A sort of a short inhale and a really slow, long exhale. However, the breath that actually helped the most was like the horse breath, you know, where you go like that. So I kid you not, for 45 minutes, my husband and I are in the back seat of the car and we're just going we were trying to release as much dopamine as we possibly could. So in between contractions, my husband was, was genuinely, he was telling me jokes. He was getting me smiling and laughing. But what we were doing most of all is we were really connecting. We were breathing together, we were holding each other's hands and we were doing this together. And this incredible bond just started to form as I had my eyes closed, he's just guiding me, he's leading me. And I would tap, tap him when a contraction was coming and then we would breathe through them together. And I felt so safe, so secure. We honestly just became one in, in, in that time, in that car trip. Because honestly, I was so far along, like my mum actually thought I was gonna give birth in the car. She was telling dad to like, hurry up, hurry up. So he was driving like really fast. So flustered, he ends up driving into the ambulance bay that's a one way street. And he goes in the opposite way. People rush out being like, hey, what are you doing? You can't do this. And then mom gets out of the car and she's like, she's in labor. <laughs> All the stuff are like, oh, oh, it's okay. We'll, we'll get you a wheelchair. <laughs> and now the birthing suite I was so excited for because they've got these big windows that overlook beautiful mountains. The room's so big, so spacious. There's a birthing tub, there's a shower, there's a big massive bed that like moves around for you. I honestly could have been giving birth in a closet. Like it did not matter where I was giving birth because I just had my eyes closed the entire time and just doing my horse breath. my midwife so much because they were so on board with my birth plan. I didn't want any intervention. I didn't want any directed pushing. I didn't want them touching me. I didn't want any cords. I wanted them to be completely hands off. And I wanted to have an unmedicated, all natural birth where I felt everything. I felt all the different stages. And I wanted to birth him sort of on my own and, and let my body intuitively birth him out.
However, when I arrived, I actually wanted to get checked. I wanted to see how far along I was just mentally. So I knew mm, I've maybe got another 10 hours or do I have another hour of this? So I ended up trying to get checked to see how dilated I was, see if my waters were still intact, all of that. However, because my contractions were so regular, by the time she tried to check, it was like another contraction came, so she couldn't fully tell. However, she thinks I was roughly probably nine centimeters by the time I arrived at the hospital. So at this stage, they had filled up the tub and that felt so, so nice. <laughs> It was warm, I felt so free to move, I felt so lightweight. So once again, my husband and I are just holding on to each other. We're still breathing together. He's still with me for every single contraction, helping me relax. Then something changed. I went into transitions. I remember I was in this position with my head <laughs> pressed against my forearms. I went from being in this dark cave to suddenly I opened my eyes and I felt so aware of everything that was suddenly in the room. And what happened for me was this shift. I went mentally from feeling like I'm just in this dark cave, I just need to breathe and manage the, the pain. I ended up becoming like this lion, releasing my jaw and started letting out this moan that ended up turning into this roar where the pain became powerful, the pain became purposeful. And I felt this urge to push and I suddenly felt really in control. It felt so strong. And in between contractions, I just look at my husband and I say, change the music. Cause at this point it was just like the hospital music, but I had like a playlist. And I was like, change the music. I've got an oil diffuser put on the oils. Where's dad? Get him into the room because I want him to start praying and give me some water. And I also want a grape. And literally I did not have any medication at all throughout my whole uh, labor except for two grapes. That was the only stimulus I had. This was the interesting thing. My husband actually had no idea that I had a birth playlist. And so he just puts in a random song. He just types in like Christian soaking music and clicks on one and it ends up being the Yeshua song. And I remember being in the tub, hearing the music and going, this isn't on my playlist. This is a different song. Oh, well, it's still really nice and left it there. What ended up happening was during my contractions, I'm hearing the song, I'm hearing the melody, I'm hearing it played and I just start connecting to the music, sort of singing the song in my head. And then I suddenly hear someone humming the song. And I think that's that's a girl's voice. And the only other woman in here, aside from mum, is my midwife. Hold on a second, I think my midwife is Christian. I'm holding on to my husband and I'm holding on to my dad, feeling like I was breathing the next generation down. I felt the strength of them, I felt dad's prayers. My midwife is humming to the song, I'm singing along, and the room just transformed into this like angelic space. It felt so peaceful, it felt so calm, it felt so majestic, it felt like holy ground. It was later dad and my husband both said, I felt like there were angels in the room at that moment. It just felt so holy. It felt like this royal moment. I think that's cool. All right, I'll be back. We've got Koa joining us for the rest of the story. Okay, so where was I? I was in active labor, pushing for almost an hour when another midwife sort of comes in and checks and says to my midwife, although I overheard, hi. She said, if the baby's head doesn't crown in the next contraction, 
we're gonna have to get her out of the tub. Even though nothing was wrong, the midwives were constantly checking his heart rate in between contractions with the Doppler. I just overheard that and I interpreted that as, oh my gosh, something's wrong. Something's not good and the baby needs to come out right now. And in that moment, I honestly became a mum. In that moment, I thought I need to do everything to get this baby out. It's like I went into this. Hi, look at you. Hi. You happy? You happy? I just went into this state of, oh my gosh, I need to get the baby out. And the baby, the baby needs to come out right now. Even though I was like nowhere near crowning, my mum was taking some very non-PG photos so I could see and feel. I closed my eyes and I said, Koa, you need to come out and you need to come out now. And so we need to do this together. Are you ready? Let's go. We need to meet you right now. In that next contraction, I pushed and roared with everything that was inside of me. And in the next push, all of him came out in the next contraction. Head, body, everything. He literally shot out like a cannonball. under the water and I picked him up. I see my husband and I start crying. He's tearing up and suddenly we, we were parents and we had Koa. In that moment, something flicked and I went from being a grizzly bear to a roaring lion to suddenly being myself again. Going, oh my gosh, like I've got a baby. What's just happened? I felt like I had woken up from a dream where I was like, I've got a baby, what do, what do I do? Oh my gosh, I've got a baby. Oh my gosh, am I, am I holding him right? And so we get out of the tub, we go into the bed, we instantly have skin to skin contact. I wanted to uh, feed straight away. I wanted to have de Hello. delayed cord clamping. My midwife is just doing all the usual checks whilst we are feeding straight away. Good job, my love. Can you smile? You did it. No. So it was so exciting to introduce him to the world and introduce him to our parents saying, this is Koa. Yeah, this is Koa. Oh. And he's gonna be a warrior. Yeah, aren't you? So he was born 28th of April, 5.41 p.m. And all of labor was about seven hours in total. And so after we do all the checks and everything like that, and we go to cut the cord, we uh, decide to pray because in that moment we were one and suddenly going to be cut into two. And so we just prayed over him, over his life. And um, it was beautiful. Even the midwife prayed. It was later that my midwife says to me, like, Laura, thank you so much. Thank you for letting me be a part of that birth. She's like, that was the most beautiful birth I have, I've ever witnessed. She went home that night and as she went home, she's like, oh, I decided to play the Yeshua song on my drive home. And then the next song I played was The Blessing by Carrie Job. And she said, oh, I just want to encourage you, Laura. I feel like that's like um, a prayer over his life, which is amazing because the first time I felt Koa kick in my belly was when we're at church. And when that song was playing, The Blessing was playing at church. That's the first time I felt him kick. And then the last thing was when we were going to bed at night, I could hear, my husband's phone still playing the song, but really quietly. And I said, love, can you can you turn off the the song so we can go to bed? And he's like, what song? What are you talking about? I said, I can hear a phone. And he's like, Laura, my phone's like off. I can't hear anything. And for about one to two days, 
I just constantly kept hearing the Yeshua song just so quietly. I was so convinced. I was like, I can hear the song playing, can't you? And so I don't know what that was, whether I was hearing, hearing angels, I don't know, but it was, it was so beautiful. We ended up like singing the song, my husband and I together in our room as we go to bed that night. And it was just such a, a beautiful moment. <laughs> All right, so I'll leave it there. Hope that the story of Koa's birth bless 